hello you wonderful people i hope you all are doing great and in today's video we will discuss top five must have technical skills for biomedical engineer so without further ado let's dive into the video so the first technical skill would be proficiency in matlab and programming right so the first step is to be familiar with a programming language such as matlab now matlab is a high level programming language obviously and uh, in the field of biomedical engineering matlab is a very powerful tool which is used for processing the data processing the images and uh, analyzing different kind of data and images and also it is used for uh, modeling the biological systems right so if you see you know like uh, graphical user interface for histogram so if you see this it's an mri scan and using matlab image processing we have improvised the quality of the image so the left image is an original image on the right hand side you can see a more transformed image which is more clearer and in that you can see maybe the clots are very clearly visible right so Again, I'm not telling you you should only learn MATLAB programming. If you want, you can learn Python, you can learn C++ or embedded C. But if you learn MATLAB, it's always an advantage because the the implementation or uh, the use case of MATLAB is very vast, right? As I said, data processing, image processing, uh, modeling of biological systems. So it has uh, various use cases wherein you can use MATLAB programming for your benefit. So the first skill that I will highly recommend you all to learn is MATLAB programming or any other programming language. So the second must have technical skill would be medical imaging know-how. So have you ever wondered okay, how an MRI machine is working or how a CT scan machine is working or how an X-ray works or an ultrasound works? If no, then understanding how a medical imaging equipment is working is a very basic fundamental skill that all the biomedical engineers should have right it's it's basically understanding the physics behind mri scans ct scans x-ray scans ultrasounds etc and it's it's not just understanding how it's working so if you see the specific image uh, this probably is a biomedical engineer and that probably would be a radiologist or a biomedical engineer we don't know just let's just let's just assume it's a biomedical engineer so it's not just about understanding how the equipment works so if at all anything happens to the equipment or if there is an error in the equipment you should be able to fix it on the other hand if you if you are in the system once the scan is done you should be in a situation wherein you can use various image processing techniques to extract the meaning, meaningful data from the pile of data that you have extracted from the scans right so understanding medical imaging or else how the equipments how the uh, medical imaging equipment works or how to process the images for far more efficient results and understanding is something that is very important so the second technical skill which is very important for you as a biomedical engineer would be understanding in-depth knowledge of medical imaging tools equipments and image processing so the third must have technical skill should be understanding of biomaterials and tissue engineering now imagine designing a medical device which is working seamlessly with the human body right so biomaterials and tissue engineering is all about something like this so when you are diving deep into biomaterials you will understand various materials which are working in coordinates with the human body so now let's say there are different implants that we design so what materials can we use to make sure that there are no side effects and the biocompatibility of that material is really well so that the body is also not showing any kind of side effects or uh, you know anything going on the wrong side so if you see this image right in front of you it's a dental implant right so you would see there is a stainless steel which goes inside the roots of uh, your jaw so in this case it is very important for us as a biomedical engineer to make sure that the materials that we use to develop these kind of implants are not reacting with the skin or the body or uh, any of the body uh, parts right because imagine if if you take any um, material to develop these kind of implant and you put it inside your jaw and after a few days it starts bleeding and it starts getting infected the body is not uh, accepting the 
bio compatibility and it it starts reacting and you end up having more serious issues right so biomaterials is all about understanding different kind of biomaterials which you can use to design medical devices and implants or prosthetics on the other hand tissue engineering it's all about understanding everything about tissue regeneration so recently you would have heard that uh, artificial heart is something that the scientists are working on artificial ears is something which the scientists are working on so to develop those kind of things to uh, develop artificial limbs or organs you need a really deep understanding of tissue engineering as i said an example could be tissue regeneration right so the third must have technical skill as a biomedical engineer is an understanding of biomaterial and tissue engineering right so if you have knowledge on both the aspects really wonderful you may get a lot of opportunities trust me on that so the fourth must have technical skill would be understanding of biomechanics and fea software so fea stands for finite element analysis so let me help you understand the difference between both of these things and how it is actually implemented when it comes to uh, the industry right so when you talk about biomechanics bio stands for biology mechanics stand for uh, mechanical like mechanics how exactly things are working Uh, from the mechanical perspective so when you combine both of these words together it's basically understanding how the body movements are working how different kind of pressure are uh, being exerted or inside the human body so if if i help you understand this with an example if you look at this image this specific person is using a prosthetic limb because he doesn't have a leg so when you are designing something like this you need to have a really good understanding of biomechanics so that you understand in which part of this equipment how much pressure would be exerted by the person so if you see there is a graph which shows that starting from zero it goes to uh, 80 mm pressure so if you see there are different different points that they analyze to make sure how much pressure would be exerted and accordingly uh, they can develop an equipment which can withstand the uh, maximum pressure right so biomechanics when it comes to external uh, equipments or prosthetics or implants it's all about how much pressure the body would be exerting on that specific equipment second point understanding how the different body movements work so let's say if you are developing a prosthetic limb or a hand you you need to have a really understanding a good understanding about how our limbs are working how our hands are moving so that you can uh, understand various pressure points develop the movements accordingly and uh, make sure it it helps you to basically develop a more efficient prosthetic or an implant or a device but when it comes to the internal body part it's all about understanding how the human body is exerting forces inside of the human body right now how do we, how do you understand it right so when it when you're developing something like a prosthetic which is uh, right here in front of you when you're developing a prosthetic like this how do you actually understand ki this much pressure will be exerted at this much point so that is exactly where finite element analysis softwares coming to picture so if you look at this example this is a software called ensis 2019 r1 academic so ensis is a software every year they will be updating a lot of things and ensis is one of the FEA software finite element analysis software so if you look at this example this is example of a, a knee implant right so if you look at this knee implant and if you look at the left side there are readings given right so when the knee moves how much pressure will be exerted so the maximum pressure exerted in this specific implant would be in the middle where uh, both of the jo- joints are connecting and when the joints move right the pressure will be uh, in between more like more pressure will be there because of the friction and other in, uh, aspects but if you see on the other side it is blue because the pressure uh, is going to be very less on that aspect so so when you develop implants or prosthetics or limbs or any kind of things with this analysis it helps you to actually make a more uh, efficient product a more elastic product so that it can Uh, withstand a lot of strain and stress so it basically helps you to make a really efficient uh, implant or device or anything of that sort so that is the fourth must have technical skill which i would recommend you all to have and uh, again this software is something which we usually don't learn in our colleges obviously you will have to learn it by yourself and uh, so yeah this is something which will make you stand out of Uh, among other students who maybe are studying only whatever is being taught in the colleges right the last the fifth and the fifth must have technical skill should be signal processing and data analytics 
or data analysis so let's say signal processing as a biomedical engineer we tend to work with a lot of signals which we extract from the human body so let's say this is an example of an ecg signal so right when the body uh, when we are using electrodes to acquire the data from the body this is the the first picture that you see this one is the data that we extract from the body it will have a lot of electrical noises it will all it will have a lot of artifacts which we have to filter out so signal processing is all about filtering those noises and taking out the best uh signal wave that we can derive to have an understanding as to what kind of patterns or what kind of readings we could take so let's say if, if you see these examples the first example is uh, the ecg signal which we have acquired from the body which has a lot of external noise right and it looks very uh it's having a lot of artifacts but when you look at post signal processing so you acquire the data you process the signal and then you give the output so when you're looking at the output all the electrical noises all the external noises all the artifacts are removed and you are having you are having a more clearer reading which you can read understand and accordingly make a more informed decision as to what kind of uh, heart rhythm uh, he or she is having and all those things so signal processing it's all about acquiring the data from the body uh, amplifying it in a more clearer way removing all the artifacts and external noises and then projecting it out to get better understanding and make making out better better readouts as to what is happening inside the body right and when it comes to data analysis or data analytics it is something towards more on the research side of the industry wherein uh, you basically have millions of data and you have to project out those data in such a way that you can understand uh, different let's say different kind of uh, target people or example again let's understand this example so if you look at the specific uh, reading right so this is an example wherein the researchers have had let's say a data of around 250 million people right and they were basically seeing uh, the ex uh, difference between a non-smoker and a smoker so when you have data of 250 million people you will not uh, understand who are non-smokers or who are smokers so using different data analysis models you will understand and segregate the data accordingly so that you have two separate set of data wherein you can see who are non-smokers and who are smokers right so this is something which uh, which i thought i could explain with the help of an example but on the other hand data analysis or data analytics also is something where you can predict what can happen in the future so let's say if you have an ecg data of a person for last five years analyzing that data and understanding that data and uh, processing that data that data you can understand what could happen potentially in the next two years you can predict it very effectively but in that case you will have to use a lot of ml algorithms or uh, you know a lot a lot of uh, uh what do you say reinforced learning you will have to put uh, while you are training that model so a lot of things like that will come into picture so okay so that's about it i really hope you enjoyed this video and these are the five skills which you should focus on learning at this point of time in the industry but absolutely i'm not telling if you learn these five skills you will be surviving in the industry for next 10 years because obviously it's a learning curve it's a learning journey where you have to continuously learn and grow and understand how the industry is changing accordingly acquiring new skills as well right so i hope this video helped you all if at all please share it with your friends colleagues if you are a working professional and uh, drop in your comments and any suggestions or any recommendations that you would have for me and i would be more than happy to help you all so see you in the next video till then stay safe and let's learn and grow together